young girls at? This is a great question, but it's not one that I'm going to answer right now. First, I'll tell you where them girls aren't. They are not in middle and high school level history classes. They're filled with this guy, John C. Calhoun. Calhoun was a South Carolina senator who lived for 450 years. I think I started studying him in seventh grade, and he finally died by spring break of my junior year. I hated history, but I love science. Here I am at three years old wearing my tiny doctoral robes, all ready for that PhD in science that I knew I was going to get. I love science because even at a young age, I could connect with it on a very personal level. I spent my summers in a marine research station in the San Juan Islands, and I was able to play in tide pools and ask questions and find my place in the natural world in a way that made a lot of sense to me. Now, I took my love of science in the field, and I brought it into the classroom. And by the end of middle school, I had a reputation for being a huge nerd in science, always asking questions, always wanting to know more. Now, by the time I graduated college, th some things had changed, although some had definitely stayed the same. I was still a huge, huge nerd. But my love of science had been almost fully eclipsed by a passion for history. Now, this abrupt change started for me because of the school that I went to, a small liberal arts college that required all students to take one class in each of the major disciplines. So as someone who always eats her vegetables first, I thought, my god, math and history, I'm, I'm coming right at you. So I signed up for a colonial American history class, and I braced myself that first day for Calhoun. But amazingly enough, my old nemesis was nowhere to be found. In fact, as I read through the syllabus, some of the dates, a couple battles, the events were vaguely familiar from my high school days, but really, there was no Calhoun, there was no Jefferson, my god, there was no Washington. Instead, the syllabus was full of the names of women, many of which I did not recognize. Now, I'll add as a caveat, I went to a women's college, so, you know, it shouldn't have been shocking, but it was fall of my freshman year, and I was very new to the whole thing. So as the course progressed, I learned a lot about these women, and they were so active and so passionately engaged in the time period in which they live, and it lit up the historical narrative in a way that I had never expected and never thought possible. Here were women who were doctors and lawyers, active in politics and engaged in business. In fact, as I took history class after history class, I realized that these women were chapter titles and not footnotes. They were subjects and verbs rather than the boring old pronouns that I was used to. It really should not have surprised me that 51% of a population will make a mark on their culture and their time period. But to me, this was an absolute revelation. And I love the sense of connection that I got, not just with the individual women themselves, but with the time period in which they lived. It was a deep connection. It was very profound. And it reminds me of the feeling I got when I played in those tide pools as a child all those years ago. Now, these women were passionate, engaged, and they were leaning in long before Sheryl Sandberg ever coined the phrase. And I wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to make my mark and be self-empowered. So, at the age of 23, I moved to Hong Kong. Now, it might not be immediately obvious how a modern Asian city of 7 million people is similar to a handful of Puritans living in 18th century America, but to me, the two are inextricably linked. Because they're both part of an answer to a question that I had never thought to ask, where are all the women, until I was in a unique environment to put the answer, everywhere, right in front of me. Opportunities for unexpected yet obvious connection are in front of us all the time. I love hiking, but when I really dig into the why, it's because I like a tangible connection to the natural world, hence my newfound love of gardening. Similarly, a trip I took to Cambodia a number of years ago through a back and forth question and answer has led me to a connect the dots of, hey, cooking's great, I love doing it. Tangential connections are all around us if we ask the right question. But doing so takes a leap of faith. We have to be ready for the unknown and the unexpected answers that will come back at us. We all have creepy John C. Calhouns in our past. But if we can get past them, we'll see opportunities for people and ideas and opportunities that we just never thought were even out there. So I started this talk with a question, where are all them girls at? And the answer is everywhere, and that's great for me. But the question itself is more important, so I have one for you. What's the one obvious discovery that you are on the brink of uncovering, and how will it revolutionize your worldview? Thank you.